Hello everyone, my name is Christine and I am owner and designer at Elegant Creations by Design. Um, this is the very first video I'm producing to show my fellow laser enthusiasts how I go about creating patterns for earrings. And firstly, I understand everyone uses an entirely different software to create their images or patterns. Um, I happen to use Inkscape, which is a free downloadable tool. You can Google it. Um, in my opinion, it, it's quite a powerful tool. Um, so if you are downloading Inkscape today, uh, it is very likely that it is slightly different than the version I use. I downloaded my version about a year ago. The version you download today, if, if that's what you're doing, um, could be a little different. So the controls I'm about to go through in my video might be a little different than what you see. Also, if you are using a different type of software, uh, become familiar with those tools in that program so potentially you could follow along. Um, and so without further ado, let's jump into it. So here is Inkscape. Um, I went into File, New to create a new document. This is what the blank screen looks like. Typically what I like to do is have specific menus up underneath the object menu here. There's fill and stroke. So we'll add that and align and distribute. So those two are my primary tools that I use for creating just about any pattern. And these patterns can be used for earrings. They could be used for ornaments. The different things that we'll go through you can apply to just about any thing that you plan to create. So what I wanted to create today was sort of a knit pattern. I've been seeing this a lot and I've wanted to toy around with creating my own type of pattern. It doesn't have to be exactly knit, but something close. So I'm going to start out with the shapes here. Clicking on the circle, I'm going to create an oblong shape. I'm going to click back on the arrow here. So now we've got our little oblong, uh, circle-y, oval -y shape. If you click on this object again, you'll see it has these little turning arrows. What I'm going to do is turn that image just a little bit, put it on kind of an angle. Now what I'm going to do is duplicate this, and this is how we start to develop our pattern by creating shapes, duplicating those shapes, and arranging the shapes. So I'm going to click on this. Uh, there's a few, there are a couple of ways you can duplicate your image. What I like to use is Control D. That will create a second image right on top of that. Now I can either arrow down or take my mouse and move that image. What I'm going to do is duplicate this several times. You can also do a Control V. Uh, to do a copy and paste of the image. Control D is just the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to do Control D several times. And then I'm going to move those duplicated images around my screen here. Make sure you get all of them. You don't want any layer left. All right. How many times did I duplicate this? I think that's it. Yep. So we're good now. So now that we have a basic set of images uh, of little ovals. I'm going to align these. So going into my align tab here, uh, you'll see relative to selection is the, it, it should be the defaulted uh, option here. And then what I'm going to do is align left edges. So what I did here, actually, I, I had highlighted everything. And then I go to my selection tool here and then align. What I'm also going to do is distribute because I want all these images to be equally uh, an equal distance apart. All right. So we click that here. So you see you can do uh, distribute horizontally. You could do distribute vertically. I distributed horizontally. Uh, looking at this image, I think I want to move things up just a little bit. So I'm going to highlight and using my arrow key, 
get things to fit a little more closely together. I'll realign this because uh, I'm just going to use my mouse to move it up. And once I have that, you know what, I think I'm going to create some more. So I'm going to highlight all these and I'm going to do Control D again and create another duplicate of all of those little images. Now that I have this, I am going to move my screen up a little bit. I'm going to zoom out, highlight all of this, and we're going to do a realignment. Why is that not high? There we go. Realigning everything to the left, and we're going to redistribute it so everything is evenly spaced. Now that we have this, I'm going to group these together. Now to group multiple objects, you would just select all your objects and then click Control G. That's going to create a full grouping. So you see now I can move the whole thing as one. I'm now going to Control D again. So now is where we actually start developing the pattern uh, widthwise. So now that I have a duplicate of this column of uh, images, I have this. I'm going to mirror image that because, as we know, with knit patterns, you have kind of mirror images of, of the yarn, right? So there's the, the yarn creating um, those little pinpoints or the, the knitting pattern. Now I'm going to select both of these columns and I'm going to duplicate several more times. So we've got that. Oops. I'm going to select both of those. Control S allows you to select multiple things. Highlight that. Or you could do Shift, Shift and Select. There we go. And I think that's as many as I created. So once again, I'm going to select these all. I'm going to move them over just a little bit. I'm going to realign each column separately. So to ensure that I'm centered horizontally, I'm going to click on the Center on Horizontal Axis, and I'm going to do that for each of my images. Right, so you see now everything is centered in that way. I'm actually going to group each one of these as well. So we'll group that. Group. Group. And then lastly, group this one. Now I'm going to select them all. I'm going to again horizontally, so they're all aligned. And then what I want to do is distribute, but I want these to be a little closer. So I'm just going to select an arrow closer to the edge of the previous column. All right. And you know what? I'm going to duplicate this again. I think I need a few more of these over to the right. Do one more duplicate. There we go. Now we've got what appears to be a knit pattern, I'm going to distribute these vertically and do another align. I'm a little crazy about the alignment. Now that I have all of these together, I'm going to group it all and I'm going to take the arrow over here and I'm just going to minimize this a little bit. And you'll see right now I can make it wider, I can make it longer kind of come up with, I think that looks about right. Now, if you wanted to maintain this particular view, what you could do is lock down your width and your height. And what that will allow is if you click on your arrows at the corners, it's always going to keep that same width and height and just changes the size of the pattern. Hope that made sense. All right, so let's move this over to the side. Now it's time to create our actual earring on which we're gonna apply the pattern. So taking the circular tool, let's just create a basic circle earring. 
All right, I'm just going to create that circle. Now, again, I, I love for things to be aligned. This appears to already be aligned because I had locked the tool before. So it's uh, 61.198 millimeters. I'm going to actually change this to inches. I prefer working in inches. And what I want is for this circle uh, to be about, I don't know, I don't like earrings that are too big. So I'm going to make these an inch and a quarter. So if I just type in 1.25 in the height, because I had this locked down, it's going to change the width as well. So now we've got a perfectly symmetrical circle, same diameter. And let me zoom in just a little bit. To zoom in, if you have a pad on your keyboard, or if you're using a laptop, um, you could just take your fingers and, and zoom in as you would on a phone, on any smartphone. So now that I've got my circle, I also need a tab for my jump rings and for my hooks. So again, I'm going to take the circle tool, keeping this very simple, we'll create a circle shape. Um, now it looks like this one did not come out symmetrical. We can see that by the width and the height. So what I'm going to do is unlock and let's see what I typically like for my hooks to be is a 0.07 diameter. So I'm going to change both of these manually. So 0.07, enter. Now we've got, you can see that little tiny um, jump ring hole or hook hole. I'm going to lock that. All right. Now there's two ways you could do this. You can either just add that right to your circle and there you are. You've got an earring with a hook. I actually like to put my uh, jump rings or hooks a little off of the pattern here. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So taking the shape, I'm actually going to duplicate the circle. All right. So if I move that, you'll see there's my duplicated circle. I'm going to increase the size of this. So we're locked down. It's going to maintain that perfect circle shape. I'm going to click plus here. And I think I'm going to increase this just a little bit. Let's make it maybe a 0.2. And again, because it's locked, it's going to change both the width and the height. And then what I'm going to do is provide a fill color. So there, I'm going to just fill that with a light blue color. Let's make this, it doesn't really matter. We'll just make it a dark red. And then what I want to do is layer these. Now, if you notice, if I move the little circle, over here, it's showing behind. What I want this to be is in front. So I'm going to do object. I'm going to do raise to top. So when you have layers, when you're working with layers, you can raise things to the top. You can lower to the bottom. If there's multiple layers, you can raise one layer above the others by using the raise and lower uh, options here. So for this one, I'm going to raise to the top. Now, if I move this little thing over, you'll see it's going to appear at the top of my other circle, my medium sized circle. I'm going to highlight both of these. So just grabbing both images, want to align this. So we're going to align both vertically and horizontally. So now everything is perfectly symmetrical, the little circles inside the larger one. But now what I'm going to do, bear with me, is create the cutout. So when you send your images or when you send your SVGs over to your Glowforge software or uh, if you're using some other laser machine, this is going to allow you to create the cuts where you need it. So highlighting both images, I'm going to hit Control minus. And what that's going to do is create that cutout. So now if I were to, let's say, change my fill in stroke. The stroke, by the way, is the outside of any image. Fill, of course, is exactly what it says. It'll fill in the color. For stroke, um, most softwares, I think, use red as a typical cut line. So I can click on the stroke paint here, and I want to make that red. So you'll see now both the inner circle as well as that outer circle are going to be cut. All right, don't necessarily need the fill for this, 
okay, so if I go to fill here, I can choose no paint. Down at the bottom here, again, this might differ based on your version of Inkscape. You can choose for no fill here if you want to change the stroke color, which we can see again here is a, is a red color. You can hit, um, you can select a color from the bar here. Let's say we wanted to make it yellow. You do shift and click, and that's going to change the outside. Let's change it back to red. So shift, click, now it's red, and I'm going to get rid of the fill. Again, this is an earring. We need this to cut as well. So we're going to change the outside here. Shift, click, make that red. Now I want to join these two things, right? So we want obviously our hook or jump ring circle here to be part of the main earring. So I'm just going to overlay these. Uh, now, of course, I want to align it. So I'm hitting shift click to select both of these images. I'm going to go back to my align menu and I'm going to center. So it looks like I was almost right on. And now with these highlighted together, we're going to go to path and we're going to create a union. So this is going to join those two shapes. And now, as you see, now we've got one complete earring shape. You could do this with any shape you want. This is how people may, and this is how I do it, but this is how others may create uh, the shapes that you need. All right, so now that we've got our earring shape, um, I'm gonna create a duplicate of this, Control D, and I'm just gonna move that over here. I have a trick here, and let me zoom out just a little bit here. Now, firstly, I want to see how does my earring look with the pattern as it exists right now? All right, that's looking, eh, the pattern's a little big for the earring shape. So what I'm going to do, let's move that off. I am going to, again, make that pattern just a little bit smaller, All right? Because I want to see a lot of those knit-like uh, shapes inside of my circular earring. And, eh, Maybe just a touch smaller area, I think. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, what we need to do is address our pattern. All right, let's move this over here. Just get it out of the way. Now let's return to our pattern. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, move this down. All right, you've got your... Uh, scroll bars here too. If you need to move the screen, you'll see this one here, one here. I tend to use the pad on my laptop. We want to create a solid pattern because remember, this is just a grouping right now and all of these are little individual images. It's not necessarily what we want. So when you create your earrings, you want your pattern to be as um, complete as possible. And what, it, what I mean by that is that all the elements are joined up. And this is going to help us later when we apply our pattern to our earring. And then we need to remove all the uh, extra pattern from the outside of the earring. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to ungroup. So to ungroup, you can either go to object, I believe there's the ungroup here, or you can do control shift G. So remember control G allows you to group, control shift G allows you to ungroup. So now I'm going to ungroup several times because remember we've, we've grouped uh, the entire image, we've grouped the columns, we have sub columns, and then we have the little oblong pill shaped items. So let me just make sure. Yes. Okay. So now everything is ungrouped. If I click on one of these little ovals, you'll see their individual shapes. The other thing I'm going to do, because I want this to be a pattern that's engraved on my earring, I'm going to fill this. I'm going to fill this with black. Again, black is one of the typical engraved colors when you send your image to uh, your Glowforge software or whatever other software that you're using. Um, and I'm going to get rid of the, there is an outline here. So if we look at the stroke, there is a stroke that's also showing in black. I'm going to go to the none um, option here, shift and click. And you'll see my stroke is now, uh, has now moved to none. 
Now what I want to do is join up this entire image. So similar to what we did with the earring when we created the little hook hole or the jump ring hole, um, we're going to create a solid image here. And we do that by doing another union. So we'll go to the path menu. Now that all those images are selected, we go to union. Sometimes takes a few seconds for it to process. And there we go. We now have a solid image. So now if I were to change the color, let's say I wanted to make it blue, want to make it aqua, you can change the color there. So I'm going to leave that black again because black signifies engrave. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Now here, let's, uh, let's move our earring over so we get kind of an idea as to what that earring is going to look like. And I actually quite like the way that's going to appear. Now, what some people might do is remove the outside of this image from here. Um, and you can do that by using uh, lines. You could do the Bezier curves or straight lines in order to remove the image outside of the border of the earring. I have found an easier way to do this. So let's zoom on out. Let's move our screen over a little bit. Let's move our earring over a little bit. All right, now this is why we've got a duplicate earring shape here. And that's because one of these is going to serve as a template to remove the outside of the pattern. So what I'm going to do is take a square shape. I'm going to take that square shape and uh, I think this is about the size we would need to cover this pattern. So I created a shape. Now I want this square, of course, to be uh, layered behind my earring. So I'm going to lower that to the bottom. You can see our little earring kind of popped up here. I'm going to center that. Now I'm going to remove this earring shape from within this solid pattern. So I'm going to highlight both. So this is highlighted. Then I click shift and click to highlight the earring image and do control minus. Now we have a solid pattern on the outside with the earring on the inside. This is going to enable us to create that shape that we need. So now I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna center it where I think it makes sense. Uh, let me zoom in just a little bit. All right, I think we're pretty well centered on there. I like the way that looks. So you can see a little jump ring hole here and then this is the outside pattern. You know what I'm gonna do just make it a little easier. I'm going to change this outside. And this doesn't matter. This outside part can can be any color that you want it to be. I'm just going to make it aqua. Um, so it stands out a little bit. All right, so the aqua pattern and let's say it looks like it's still on the bottom, I'm going to raise that to the top. There we go. Because we want that square image to be above the engrave layer or our patterned layer. Now that we have where we want this centered, I'm going to highlight this uh, square and I'm going to do a shift click on the inner pattern here. So you see it kind of creates that um, selection. With both images selected, I'm now going to do control minus again. And now what we have is the actual earring with the pattern. Now we just need to apply the pattern to the outside of the earring. So I'm going to scroll out just a little bit here or zoom out just a little. Let's grab our template that we created earlier. And what we're going to do is now just layer the two of these. So I'm just going to select both images grab both of them. And again, back to our align tool, we're going to center, we're going to center horizontally, vertically. Um, and now we have a complete earring, right? So you have your cut line on the outside, you have your engraved pattern on the inside. Now what we could do is highlight both of these, I'm going to do control G to group it, right? So that way, it'll all move together. 
And then I'm going to control D, right? Because they're earrings, we need our pair. And there we go. We've got a pair of earrings. I'm just going to center this a little bit on the page here. I'm going to file and save. And actually what I would recommend, and I realize I didn't do that here, always save your files uh, as you go along. So I went through this fairly quickly. I never saved my file, but when I'm working on a really complicated design, um, I always make sure to save it very often. I have lost work before and it sucks. I'm sure other people have experienced that. So I'm going to do save as, and I'm going to say, this is my new knit pattern ER for earring. And it is going to save as an SVG. I put it in my new creations folder. You see, I've got all my, my creations in here. Save. And now we've got our earrings. So you can load this into your laser software, whether, whether it's Glowforge or another. Um, of course, I'm a Glowforge Pro owner, uh, so that I would load it into my Glowforge software. But there you go. Complete uh, boho knit like looking patterned earring. I hope you liked this. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you have ideas for other patterns that you'd like me to go through, feel free to post at the bottom and maybe my next video will feature that type of a pattern. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.